Hello and welcome back to the Vintage Workshop. My name is Jeff. Uh, hey, uh, it's been a while since I've seen you. Uh, the thumb has finally recovered. Uh, mostly, it's still a little bit weird, but uh, the, uh, the surgeon ended up having to remove a little bit more of it uh, than they had originally anticipated and a uh, two week turnaround time ended up turning into almost five weeks before I could really use it again up here. So anyway, I'm back up in the shop and this video is going to be all about getting started on the Yates American Y30 bandsaw. Uh, I have already started the complete disassembly process and rather than bore you guys uh, with fast forwarding of me turning wrenches and pulling stuff apart and getting things unstuck, I went ahead and did all the work. I've got the saw completely disassembled down to the nuts and bolts and I'm going to take you over there in a second to show you uh, where we're at and give you a nice update on it and also discuss what I'm going to be doing moving forward with it. Uh, the shop has been pretty quiet uh, recently, uh, not only recovering from the surgery, but the last two weeks I was uh, pretty sick with a wicked sinus infection. So uh, not a lot's been uh, getting done except for the last couple of days finally getting a chance to get up here. Uh, I did uh, get a purchase of opportunity here for those of you who don't know what this is. I uh, picked up a nice vintage 3 inch uh, Greenlee timber framing slick. So uh, ended up uh, getting a nice deal on that. So I bought it. It's got to get uh, rebeveled and sharpened and cleaned up and flattened and all that other good stuff. And I'll probably do a separate video on showing you guys that. But I uh, wanted to just quickly uh, let you know what was sitting here in front of me. Let's uh, get you over to the bandsaw. I've got it over at the other side of the shop. Uh, and uh, let's show you uh, the mess that I've got uh, over there. Okay, so you are looking at what is the main casting of the bandsaw. It is completely disassembled right now and I've set up a little, uh, basically a huge piece of uh, plywood up on uh, saw horses which is what I typically use to uh, scatter all the parts as I remove them and label them and put them in bags and make sure that I know where everything came from so that when it's time to clean everything up and put it all back together I uh, know exactly pretty much where everything came from. As you can see the motor is completely out right now. The motor is right there. Let me zoom you in on it. That thing is huge. Uh, that is a 3 horsepower motor that weighs more than any other 10 horsepower motor I have in the shop. Uh, I had to use the, uh, the uh, engine hoist there uh, to go ahead and remove it and got that out. Uh, you know this bandsaw was built in 1936, so uh, as you can probably see sitting there uh, up on the middle there, that orange can is uh, Croil. Uh, that is probably, the, not probably, the best rust penetrant and uh, bolt unlocker, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Uh, really good for spraying down rusty everything and getting things, uh, uh, you know, removed. I did have a couple... Uh, bolt heads that snapped off during the process, so I'm going to have to, well, most of them I already have. I've got one more still stuck that I've got to drill out. I also had a taper pin problem, which I'm going to zoom you in on here in a second to uh, show you what's going on with that. Yeah, actually, before I zoom you in, I wanted to show you this uh, handle right here. Uh, this is the table tilting mechanism. I'll uh, show you the table in a second, but uh, this is the handle that literally comes off the end of this shaft. It goes up to a worm drive screw, and this is what tilts the table so that you can cut angles on the saw. It tilts it 15 degrees in and 45 degrees out, and uh, this has uh, given me the most amount of trouble, and I'm going to bring you in here and I'm going to show you, uh, but I wanted to give you a further out shot just to give you an idea of uh, you know what part of the saw we're actually talking about before I zoom in. So what you're looking at is the, uh, is the tilting system right here, and I already showed you the handle. You turn this, and it spins this, and this is what drives a gear. It's like a rack and pinion system on the bottom of the table and uh, on the trunnion, and that's what turns the table. Well, this had a, you can see this hole right here that I'm sliding the uh, punch pin into. This was a tapered pin, and some ham-fisted monkey that came before me was beating the hell out of the wrong side of the pin, and instead of driving it out, used a a literally a nail set because you could tell because of the way that the uh, the the tip 
had been driven into, which of course is going to spread the uh, the drive pin and just make it impossible to get out. I broke no less than six different drill bits, finally being able to drill that thing out and getting all the pieces out. I still can't get this gear off here, so right now it's soaking in croil. Uh, I've still got some work to do to get this final last handled assembly off. This is the last remaining parts that are still together and not completely taken apart. But uh, other than that, everything else is apart. So I just wanted to show you this. Guys, don't use a nail set to try to drive tapered pins out. Uh, it just makes sense. This is a, you know, a needle, a pin punch. Uh, get yourself some cheap pin punches and, and use the right tool. So it's kind of crazy in here right now, and it's uh, I've got parts strewn all over the shop floor uh, in a uh, in a high level of uh, sophisticated organization that makes it real tough to maneuver the camera around. But I wanted to show you guys everything. The part that I'm showing you right now that is the mounting plate for the uh, for the big motor that I already uh, showed you. The motor actually sits on there, and that mounting plate sits inside the. Uh, the, the casting, the main casting of the bandsaw, it's physically removed right now out towards us. But uh, on the other side of that is the brake system, uh, which is nothing more than old, uh, it's basically like a rotary drum brake system, and it's got a handle on the other side, and when you turn the handle, it expands the uh, brake pads up into the inside of the bottom wheel, which is the drive wheel, and that will slow the bandsaw down. Otherwise, when you shut this saw off, these saws, I mean, that, that saw will keep turning for, you know, 15, 20 minutes uh, because of the inertia with the, the heavy wheels and whatnot. It acts like a gigantic flywheel. So also, uh, spanning over here and looking down, that big half moon shape item, that is the gigantic trunnion which gets mounted to the bottom of the table, and that's what gets driven by the, uh, the rack and pinion, which I'm going to flip over and show you here real quick. You can kind of see... There, you can see the, uh, let me make sure you, yeah, you can see that. There's a rack, which is right here, uh, which is what uh, allows that table to tilt. And so the table's there, that's all taken apart. That's going to the grinder. I'm going to have that ground flat, and then I'm going to hand scrape it, because I like that finish. So we're going to make this thing as fancy and, uh, and neato and flat uh, as we possibly can. Also, wanted to show you the table of parts. That big arm sitting down there, which is right there, uh, that is the upper arm assembly, uh, which is unbolted. That slides up and down on the main casting, and the, the upper wheel and the upper casting, the snowflake casting housing, all mounts to that. So does the upper bearing assembly. And then you've got the entire upper spindle assembly, which is right there. You can kind of see the shaft right there. And uh, that has two bearings in it. I still have to take that apart to uh, you know, assess the condition of those bearings. I've decided that I'm going to take that all apart and see what I've got in there. Those bearings are $1,200. There's two of them in there. I really don't want to have to replace those if the two bearings that are in there are still good, if they're well greased. So basically what I have to do is take that assembly apart, uh, look at the bearings, assess them, clean them up really well, and check and see if there's any rust or pitting or anything like that. And, uh, and see if there's any wear or slop. If there's any wear at all, I'm not doing this twice, so I will definitely replace them. But uh, if I can uh, avoid that with a good set of bearings, I will. Here's the entire table that I was telling you about, filled with all the parts of this saw. Every last nut and bolt has been taken apart. You can see over here, that's the upper and lower uh, right guide system. Those I'm going to completely rebuild, and we'll do a separate video on that. Uh, that casting housing right here, that is what the upper spindle shaft assembly and that bearing uh, casing that I just got done showing you, uh, that sits in there. And those are all the parts. And uh, I did find out that I am going to have to fabricate a couple of things. The upper assembly, which is the blade uh, guard, is missing on this. What was in there was just some old piece of like channel steel or whatever like that. So we're going to have to fabricate uh, a proper uh, upper blade guard assembly for it. I have the measurements from a friend of mine who owns the saw who took pictures of his and measurements so we should be able to make that. Uh, that'll obviously be another video as well. And uh, you know the biggest thing here 
uh, with this. Well, hang on. I'm going to zoom you out so you can actually see what's going on here. So here's just a small example of what I'm talking about by staying organized. When I take parts off, I put uh, them inside plastic baggies and I take a magic marker. I write uh, exactly where those parts came from. These are bolts from the table. Uh, this is the placards. These are, uh, you, can, you probably can't see through the plastic. In fact, I know you can't because I barely can. But these are all the, the, uh, the uh, brass plates with all the insignia information about the saw. These are all on here. These are all stuck on with drive screws. Uh, I had to very carefully pry all those out uh, and get the plates off. Because uh, what I'm, you know, you know, we haven't even started cleaning this up yet. This was just the disassembly phase. So it's very important, and this table's filled with plastic baggies like this, uh, lunch baggies and bigger ones. It's very important that you keep these things all organized and keep them separate so that you can uh, very quickly uh, go through them, clean them, wire wheel them, because that's what we're going to be doing here. We're going to be wire wheeling all the nuts and bolts, polishing everything up, uh, assessing anything, uh, any threads that are damaged on here, and there's quite a few. Uh, like I told you, I had to drill some snapped off bolt heads uh, uh, that weren't, weren't broken by me. They were in here broken before, so somebody actually had tried to do some work on this saw. Uh, uh, at some point in the past, but what I do is I'll take a, uh, a, a tap of the correct size and thread pitch and I'll go through all of the, uh, the different holes and re-tap them all and clean them all up, get some oil in there, uh, any rounded over threads will get cleaned up so that way when this thing is ready to go back together that we're not going to have any problems with bolts uh, sticking and, uh, and not going in well and you know stripping threads and, and stuff like that. It's just all a part of doing a really good quality restoration we're also going to go ahead and uh, take and get rid of all this old paint that's on here, a lot of rust and everything. So it's all got to get cleaned up. And uh, I'm going to show you guys another tool that I use for that uh, in just a so second. So for those of you that are not familiar, uh, this is my weapon of choice, my tool of choice when I'm doing restoration work for uh, paint removal, rust removal, all the rest. This is a uh, Ingersoll Rand needle scaler. And what it has is it has these... Uh, uh, I don't know, I think they're high carbon steel or carbide or something like that. Uh, needles that are about, you know, a foot long that fit down into a housing in here. And this is an air driven tool. And you basically hook this thing up to 90 PSI. You pull the trigger and it individually smacks all these needles around. And what this does is pretty much the same thing that a angle grinder with a big wire wheel will do. Uh, but what's nicer about this particular tool, and I have angle grinders, and I use them with wire wheels in tough situations where you have to, but I prefer this, and the reason is, is when you're using an angle grinder, that's spinning at, what, 4,500 to 7,000 RPMs, depending on the size of the angle grinder. I've got one that, that goes at, like, 12,000 RPMs. That's an air-driven one, and that just flings all of this stuff, this old paint probably has lead in it, whatever, all over the shop, it creates an airborne dust cloud, and I really don't like working in that kind of an environment, even though I'll be wearing a mask. This tool chisels everything basically right off the casting, and everything pretty much drops straight down, so you end up uh, keeping all the debris from the cleanup all the way down to a bare bones minimum. And then what I'll do when I'm done with that is I will go to work. Uh, this is a die grinder, a 20,000 RPM air die grinder. And uh, I have a whole bunch of different, you can see I got a little wire wheel on there right now, uh, which is uh, really good for getting into little tight spots and cleaning up, you know, rusty surfaces, mating surfaces and stuff like that before uh, moving on to repainting. But I also have like Scotch-Brite pads that fit on the end of this little three inch discs. So I can get in there and I can polish up surfaces like uh, the pads where the uh, motor mounts are. That's not a painted surface. That has to stay, that's a machine surface. But right now everything is so rusty here, I want to go ahead and get all this rust off. So uh, at any rate, I wanted to show you guys, uh, you know, what's going to be going on. So as I'm going to, pro how I'm going to proceed with this restoration is I am definitely going to shoot some video of some of the parts of this. I'll probably show some of the needle scaling very quickly uh, just to give you an idea of what it looks like. But nobody uh, wants to watch a 15 or 20 minute video of me doing paint and rust removal off all this stuff. Uh, and then, of course, heading over to the parts cleaner, cleaning up all the grease. Grease is just, I, I don't get it, but grease and woodworking machines, they just don't go well together. But this thing was loaded with grease. It seemed like whatever was stuck on this machine, whoever, uh, way back in the past, 
uh, was using it would just load it up with grease and of course that becomes a sawdust magnet and basically creates I mean I was scraping two and three inch chunks of, of sawdust filled dried up greased gunk that were literally pasted to the side of the machine inside uh, with uh, you know like a cement that I had to you know scrape off so uh, at any rate I got to do all this cleanup uh, but once I'm finished uh, we will have the most really just this is one of the finest bandsaws ever made you guys are going to get a chance to see it uh, transform so if you're interested please stick around uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and uh, it really helps me a lot if you guys hit that like button down below because that helps the channel get recognized helps the channel grow and uh, the more people that see this uh, the better off of course it is for the channel so uh, for now uh, that's going to be it I'm going to bring you guys back uh, once I have gotten a lot of this stuff done and like I said I'll do some demonstration uh, of it but the next phase will be when most of this stuff is cleaned up and as you can see I've got a lot of work to do so uh, for now uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll be seeing you very soon and uh, stay tuned for the next episode. Talk to you guys real soon.